All right, everybody. It's time to focus, everyone. It's time to focus because we have to talk about Facebook and Google, okay? And we're going to start with something pretty simple. We're going to start with a, a, a small introduction to why we're going to, why we're even talking about Facebook and Google. You go, Facebook, Google, I know those websites. What the hell's up with the, what the hell's up with Facebook and Google? Well, let me tell you, a lot has been up with Facebook and Google. And we really, really got to talk about it. Okay. So we're going to start with a little introduction. Oh boy. Here we go. You're going to love the title of this. Are you guys ready for this? Here we go. The Facebook Papers. This is from AP News, the Associated Press, about as solid, uh, you know, uh, reporting as, as you can get off the top, okay? This is just a quick summary of what's going on here. The Facebook Papers rep represent a unique collaboration between 17 American news organizations, including the Associated Press. Journalists from a variety of newsrooms, large and small, work together to gain access to thousands of pages of internal company documents obtained by Francis Hogan, the former Facebook product manager turned whistleblower. And here we have a whole bunch of articles about this. So what this is talking about is that uh, AP has put together a massive journalistic effort to expose some of the bullshit that has been going on. Um, that has been going on on Facebook. And I am telling you right now, it is not good, okay? So here's a basic explainer. We're gonna listen to AP's explainer on this, and then we're gonna jump in and talk about further things, okay? That's what, that's what we're gonna fucking say, all right? We're gonna start with a little summary, and then we're gonna go jump into some of the threads that uh, some very, very, very insightful people have... Uh, have uh have have sort of compiled talking about the the actual like what's actually in the leaks yeah facebook is trash uh it is a a very difficult thing to deal with because believe it or not facebook is weed is weeded into your life in ways that you don't even know even if you don't use facebook they are monitoring you facebook has so much control over online data and they've been working with google so if you don't use facebook but you use google well guess what you didn't save yourself any problems. Pretty bad. It's, it's a pretty bad situation. It's very depressing for us all to deal with. Thankfully, a lot of very, a, a lot of very, very driven journalists have done a lot of work if we're willing to read it. So today, we're going to jump into this. So let's do it. Let's continue. The Facebook Papers represents a unique collaboration among 17 American news organizations, including the Associated Press. Journalists from a variety of newsrooms, large and small, work together to gain access to thousands of pages of internal company documents. Which, by the way, are... Oh, these are all... Never mind, that's just a link back. I, I have an, a link to it if you all want to look for it yourself. Look through it yourself. There's tons of them all over social media. A separate consortium of European news outlets had access to the same set of documents and members of both groups began publishing content related to their analysis of the materials at 7 a.m. on Monday, October 25th. That date and time was set by the partner news organizations to give everyone in the consortium an opportunity to fully analyze the documents, report out relevant details, and to give public uh, Facebook's public relations staff ample time to respond to questions and in inquiries raised by that reporting. Each member of the consortium pursued its own independent reporting on the document contents and their significance. Every member also had the opportunity to attend group briefings to gain information and context about the documents. The launch of the Facebook Papers projects follows similar reporting by the Wall Street Journal, sourced from the same documents, as well as Hoggins' appearance on the CBS television show 60 Minutes and her October 5 Capitol Hill testimony before a U.S. Senate subcommittee. So you guys have probably heard about things related to this. You've probably heard about the leaks from Hagen, although they were heavily redacted. The, re the leaks now have been unredacted. Yeah, coincidentally, the website went down the same day of that October 5 Capitol Hill testimony. Odd. The papers themselves are redacted versions of disclosures that Hagen has made over several months to the Securities and Change Commission, Exchange Commission, the SEC. That is a federal body. That was reported to. This is an official federal whistleblower. Okay? Just so you understand. This is not just this is not just crazy lefty mama shouting about things about Facebook and Google. This is the same things I've been saying 
literally being reported by every news organization in the world now. Just just so you're aware. Just so we're just so we're clear, okay? Just so we're clear. These complaints cover a range of topics from its efforts to continue growing its audience to how platforms might harm children to its alleged role in inciting political violence. The same redacted versions of those filings are being provided to members of Congress as a part of its investigation. And that process continues as Hogan's legal team goes through the process of redacting the SEC filings by removing the names of Facebook users and lower level employees and then turns them over to Congress. The Facebook Papers Consortium will continue to report on these documents as more become available. The AP regularly teams up with other news organizations to bring important journalism to the world. The Facebook Papers Project is in keeping with that mission. In all collaborations, AP maintains its editorial independence. So there's a lot to go through. We're talking, again, thousands of pages of, of leaked documents. Seriously. By the way, Melissa Silvis with the $10. Thank you very, very much. I'm a queer Gen Xer trying to keep a foothold for queer folks. Y'all come help. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank you for the $10. Let us continue. Okay? Because I have a couple of very, very interesting threads for us to go down, go down talking about exactly what's going on over at Google and Facebook. So let's take a look. An enormous thread on the Google fa on the alleged Go Google Facebook collusion based on the just released unredacted complaint from the Texas Attorney General. This was first filed in December. Anything purple is newly unredacted. Yellow orange is normal highlights. Online advertising is enormous. Google's exchange process processes 11 billion online ad spaces per day. Google says more daily transactions are made on ADX than on the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ combined. Google also owns the largest buy side and sell side brokers. It is the pitcher, the batter, and the umpire all at the same time. You know what that sounds like? Damn, that sounds like a monopoly. Damn, that sounds like monopolizing. You literally own the sellers, you own the buyers, you own every step of the ad process, aka... It is complete and utter market control, a.k.a. the numbers are motherfucking made up, motherfuckers. Everything's made up. All the algorithms, all the money, all the ad revenue, all the ad pitches, it's all fucking made up. But we're gonna it's going to get worse. You think this is bad. Just wait until you see just how much came out in these leaks. Senior Google employee. The analogy would be if Goldman or Citibank owned the New York Stock Exchange. So that's an internal Google employee is saying the what we're aim, they're saying the analogy for their own company would be that if Goldman Sachs or Citibank were the owners of the stock exchange. More to the point, if New York Stock Exchange was the only stock exchange and it was owned by Goldman Sachs or Citibank. This is from this is a new this is a new unredaction. At the same time, Google owns the largest buy side and sell side brokers. As one Google employee admitted, the analogy would be that if Goldman or Citibank owned the New York Stock Exchange, or more accurately, the analogy would be if Goldman or Citibank were a monopoly financial broker and owned the New York Stock Exchange, which was also a monopoly stock exchange. This is like three levels of monopoly. You understand? They not only own the exchange, they own the company that owns the exchange. And you don't have any choice because nobody else has ads online. You want to know? Guys, you want to know? Can I, can I talk about this real quick? I've talked to you guys about this real quick. Let me show you what this means. Let me show you what this means on a hard, on a hard, uh, on a hard level. Okay, ready? This is gonna, this is gonna hurt for a second. Okay, this is gonna hurt, and some of you might get mad at me, but I want to show you something. Here we go. Are you ready? You ready? Here we go. Views. 1.3 million total views on my channel. I have on my entire channel, and by the way, this is with my this is with my VODs unlisted. This is with my VODs unlisted. The thing where people watch the most of my stuff. Five thousand five hundred and fifteen thousand hours watched by imps. Demon Mama fans have watched. 501 point or 515,000.8 hours just on YouTube. And this is the total revenue I've gotten from YouTube in the two years I've been streaming. 
seven thousand dollars for you all watching five hundred and fifteen thousand hours literal yes yes that's correct if it was not for my website i would not be making stream right now if it was not through website donos i would not be streaming right now yes government bene beneficiaries pay more than that it is imagine the do you know how many hours i've streamed do you want to look at how many hours i've actually been on camera yeah it's it's terrible and this is why this is literally why right here what you're seeing right here is the reason why the analogy would be if goldman or citibank owned the new york stock exchange google owns it all pretty bad pretty bad so let's continue Google started a program called dynamic allocation, ostensibly to maximize the revenue for publishers. This is to benefit, so to maximize revenue for publishers. The, in reality, it was to snatch publisher, publisher's best inventory at the expense of publisher's best interest, interest, the complaint alleges. To respond, competitors came up with header bidding. Publishers could route ad inventory to multiple exchanges to solicit the highest bid. By 2016, this was adopted by 70% of major US online publishers. Google to the public, not at all a threat to us. Google in private, an existential threat. So they were lying to the public at the same time as all this was going on. Instead, so what Google responded to a change, so this was back in 2016, there was an attempt to change the way that ads were working, and Google responded, secretly made its own exchange win, even when another exchange submitted a higher bid. So what this means is that even if there were people willing to pay more for your ads, Google's systems were favoring its own bids, its own internal bids, even if it would make you and publishers, everybody who's making content on the internet, more money because advertisers were willing to pay more, they would choose their own right now. That's how it's going on right now even if it's unfavorable to you. So assuming a 40 hour work week, 7K over two years comes down to 14 cents an hour from YouTube's ad service. I can't believe I just did math. Guess what, Husker do? You wanna know what's even worse? That's not just the ads. That's the ads and the premium. That's, that's everything. Yikes. It's a new level of market control, controlling every level of the market. Yup. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Google's own words. Oh, yes. They called the program Jedi. Google's own words. The Jedi programs, the Jedi program generates suboptimal yields for publishers and serious risks of negative media coverage if exposed and externally. One Google employee proposed a nuclear option of cutting Google exchange fees down to zero. So if this is a little confusing to you, what this would mean is that Google would basically be trying to steal market space by sacrificing any exchange commissions on their um, on their exchange for ad revenue. This would be uh, they would this would be ex incredibly expensive. Only a very 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 rich company could even consider doing that. But that's how willing. That's how badly they wanted to control the entire market. That's how badly they really wanted to control it. Yeah, they called it Jedi. How embarrassing. Then comes the Facebook. In, in March 2017, Facebook throws its weight behind header bidding. Big threat. Okay? So the header bidding is the thing Google does not want to happen. Facebook communications revealed that Facebook executives fully understand why Google wanted to cut a deal with them. They want this deal to kill header bidding. Google doesn't want to compete with Facebook. They said they would rather build a moat by collaborating instead. Facebook anticipated this in an 18-month head bidding strategy. New, un new unredacted detail. Facebook and Google allegedly agreed on quotas for how often Facebook would win publishers' auctions, literally manipulating the auction with minimum spends and quotas for how often Facebook would bid and win. And, uh, would bid and win. So what we hear now is that Facebook decided to back up and cover for Google 
And what that meant is that Google and Facebook would strategically automatically win in a way that would seem innocuous, but that wasn't. So, e so imagine that even, even, <laughs> even on these so-called free market exchanges, the people who were controlling the, the, uh, the, the, the code, the infrastructure of the exchange used it to benefit their own monopolies and two separate massive, uh, corporations cheated in order to control and lock out everybody else. Very odd. Very weird. No, it's not a duopoly. It's not even a duopoly. They're in agreement. They may as well be the same company. They're not even competing against each other. It's not even a duopoly. Because they're not they're not even competing. It's not two competing giants. They're in they just literally said, look at this, right here. Google doesn't want to compete with Facebook. Said that they would rather build a moat by collaborating instead. This is a quote from the documents. They're not competing. They're working together. These aren't corporations competing with each other. These are business tyrants attempting to control everyone's lives and succeeding. Google employees discussed using a Jedi mind trick on the industry to cut off exchanges in header bidding newly unredacted quote-unquote tax figure google now uses its immense market power to extract a very high tax of 22 to 42 percent of the ad dollars otherwise flowing to the countless online publishers and content producers such as online newspapers you hear that everybody do you hear this google takes a tax of 22 to 42 percent of the money that would otherwise come to us wild old but juicy the open internet is now threatened by one single company google's current dominance is also merely a free a preview of its future plans google uses quote-unquote privacy as a pretext to conceal its true motives unredacted figures publishers generally make almost all of their revenue from just a small portion of their impressions also old but still juicy Google monopolizes the, the publisher ad server market for display inventory through a product called Google Ad Manager. Today, Google Ad Manager controls 90% of the product market in the United States. 90%. In what world is 90% is market control not an utter monopoly? There are no competitors. There is no one. Google's exchange charges publishers 19 to 22% of exchange clearing prices, which is double to quadruple the prices of some of its nearest ex exchange competitors. Listen to that. Those 10% people are, are, are giving half or a quarter of the prices. And Google's able to extract all of this only because... Only because it controls 90%. Only because, well, not to be fair, neither did, I mean, nobody knew for sure. This is, this was redacted uh, two, a few days ago. These redactions came out just a few days ago. A Google employee conceded, an exchange shouldn't be an immensely profitable business. It should be like a public good used to facilitate buyers and sellers. Nope. Instead, you have these you have google sitting on a thing that is a very simple structure but because they control it because nobody has told them no you can't actually control the idea of exchanging ads on the internet because there's no i no concept of impartiality in any of the systems that we build no now they take a tax on everything and then they tax you again when I get donos, they tax, they take 30%. When I get, uh, when I get, uh, joint, like people joining my channel, they take 30 to 50%. They take all of our ad revenue. We get nothing. And it's all because of this. Google's display advertising network extracts e uh, even higher fees, 32 to 40%. 
even more. This is what we're talking about because display advertising is what we're talking about right now. Google internal documents suggest that Google's share of the market is eight times larger than FAN. FAN is one of their competitors. Market here is mobile app network market. They also own AdMob, the largest ad network selling mobile app inventory. So they own the biggest seller of mobile, um, of mobile ads. They also own and operate the exchange that sells the ads. Google Ads, ad buying tool for what Google calls smaller, less sophisticated adver advertisers, charges eight to nine commission to purchase inventory from exchange or 15% from Google's exchange. Google considered creating a completely neutral platform like the New York Stock Exchange, which as we know is not truly completely neutral. They ultimately chose instead to stack the deck in their favor by owning the exchange. Google gives itself speed advantages. That's how it wins 80 plus percent of auctions on their own exchange. So literally, they're like, you want to exchange? You get to come in, but we always get first claim. So you either better sell cheaper than us, which you can't afford, or you let us win. Every single time. They give them themselves speed advantages. Imagine that. Imagine if the entire world operated on first come first term, but you had to, but, but part of the rules was that anybody who wasn't working for the exchange had to wear uh, chains on their legs so that you couldn't get over to the computer fast enough. That's literally what's happening here. That's, that's the digital equivalent of what's happening here. I'm going to go Doomer here. Uh, nothing will come of this. Not true. What comes of this is that people should lose all faith in online advertising. People should lose all faith in these algorithms. People should lose all faith in companies like Google and Facebook. These companies cannot be trusted. They do not tell you the truth. They lie to their investors. They lie to all of us. No person should have trust at all in Google or Facebook or Apple or Amazon. What faith do people have in online advertising? A surprising amount. A surprising amount, believe it or not. There are entire industries built on, ad, on, on internet advertising. We need non-political YouTubers? Yeah, we do. We need non-political YouTubers to talk about this. If we could get people, uh, if we could get people like the, like fucking, I don't know, Al Al Rudy from Alpha Investments, the normies, to talk about this stuff, that would be incredible. Wait, uh, I already did lose faith. Adblock for the win. Adblock? You want to know what's really funny about Adblock? Adblock has actually really hurt Google in certain ways. <laughs> Doe says, Google really fucked themselves over by starting out with the slogan, don't be evil. Ever moving away from that is necessarily questionable. Isn't that, isn't that funny? Isn't that kind of funny? Yeah, Good Mythical Morning could talk about this. Phil DeFranco could talk about this. Actually, Phil DeFranco, H3H3, both of these would be good people to talk about this. So if you guys, if any of you are, are fans of H3H3 or, or, or uh, Phil DeFranco, shoot them this info. Shoot them this thread. Here, I'll give you all this thread. This is a correspondent uh, for, um, this is, this is a, like, a, like a journalist doing a, a fu fucking full reading. Here you go. Send this around to all those all of your favorite content creators. I don't want to be the only one talking about this. I'm more than happy to do a segment on it right now, but seriously. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's go a little further because I want to jump into this and, 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 and see just how far this goes because it goes real far. Google's unilateral ability to extract non-competitive ad server fees demonstrates its monopoly power. New, Google charges 5% of gross spend for routing inventory to non-Google exchanges. D they literally charge you extra just for deciding to go with a non-Google exchange. Its ad server charges a 10% fee of gross transactions for routing inventory to non-Google ad networks. So if you, are, if you don't work for Google, if you don't bend the knee to Google completely in every single way, you just will be at a disadvantage. There is no doubt about it. You will not succeed. Industry experts compare a change in ad service to switching engines in mid-flight. 
Google's internal documents confirm publishers' high switching costs. Because switching costs are high, publishers are effectively locked in. You can't leave. You either stop or you work with Google. You either you either work with Google or you don't have a job. You either work with Google or your product doesn't get seen. You work with Google or you starve. That's what this is saying. That's what all of this is saying. This is saying that either you bend the knee to Google, whether you agree with them or not, whether it's fair or not, or you starve. Your business goes out. And all of us who aren't in the business of, of, uh, of, of like, negotiating with advertisers we are at the mercy of a system we have no impact on i cannot say anything about the ads that run on my videos i have no power in fact i get demonetized all the time for talking about perfectly legitimate things but they have all the power at every single level but don't be evil guys don't be evil <laughs> don't be evil don't 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 point out the fact that like literally there have been now multiple examples of both Google and Facebook lying even to the capitalist ad traders leading to complete destruction of industries. You guys realize I talked about this before, but Facebook lying about the value of video advertisement, which they lied about. They sold that shit. They were not honest about it led to the destruction of of journalism like the online journalism, there used to be lots of people getting jobs in online journalism. You used to be able to become a journalist as a career path, and that's not a career path anymore. Google's ad exchange held 60% share of all display ad inventory sold on U.S. exchanges by October 2019. Do you realize how big that is? Guys, look at this. This right here. Google's ad exchange held 60% share of all display ads. Among high-value users, its market share is over 80%. That means every single ad that you see is almost guaranteed to be a Google ad. Almost every ad you see on the internet is, is Google-owned and operated every single step of the way. They made money when you saw it. They make money when you click it. They made money when it was bought. They made money from who sold it. They, they made money from who made it. Every single step, they are taking a slice out. Boop, 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 boop. And by the end, you have nickels. You have a nickel, maybe. Everyone is getting fucked. Everyone is getting fleeced. Years and years and years ago, I wrote a, a blog. This was before I was a streamer, before I ever even thought about it. Okay? Before I ever even thought about being a, a content creator on the internet. I wrote a blog about how the ad bubble is going to be completely and utterly destructive. This is the beginning of the pop, okay? The pop has already begun, to be completely honest, but this is a big ripple, okay? Yeah, this is going to be a big ripple. This type of revelation completely destroys any faith that anybody had that there's any legitimacy whatsoever on 99% of the ways people make money on the internet. Seriously, how do you, how can any advertiser have faith that any of this even makes sense when they know that it's just bullshit, that Google is just deciding for you what products they want to promote. And if you don't please Google, you're not getting your product out there. They control the entire thing. They sort of choose the products you want to buy by catering the results everywhere you go. Uh, to get you to like certain kinds of products, not just to get you to like it, but to limit your choices. They choose who gets to put ads there in the first place, how the ads are displayed. It's all under Google's control. Like 80% guys, it's, this is, this is from, this is from the leaks. 80%. That is, that is, that is world controlling conspiracy level if we're talking about the ad industry the ad industry is just a complete google conspiracy at this point that is not an unreasonable conclusion that is what this is showing us that there is no one else functionally 20 percent of a market of that size is fucking peas that's peanuts what can we do get the news out get the fucking news out that's what that's the only thing that we can do the only thing that we can do is make sure that no one ever misses this shit. 
that this in this information gets out to everybody. That's the only thing that you can do because people cannot react to this shit if they don't know about it. Google's monopoly power in the display ad exchange and and charging super competitive prices. They are 19 to 22% of every single trade versus the closest competition paying 5 to 15%. And still, smaller players still can't grow. Google felt pressure in 2018 on its 20% fee in 2018. Yet, its fee increased from 20% to 22%. Google has insulated its exchange from any of the competitive market dynamics that would otherwise incentivize them to lower their prices. So they hold high prices, they make people pay a fuckload, and then anybody who competes against them just gets choked out. When rival exchanges attempted to gain market share by lowering prices, Google's exchange maintained or even increased prices and still gained share. Competing exchanges have not been able to meaningfully increase share despite some of them cutting their rates in half. Do you realize that? That some of these exchanges would be offering us double, but you cannot have them. You will not get them. You can't because Google won't let you. Because Google won't even let you see them. GDN charges high double-digit commissions of at least 32% on advertising transactions, which, according to public sources, is double the standard rate elsewhere in the industry. Why does Google charge such rates? Because we can, an executive said in 2016. Smaller publishers don't have alternative revenue sources. Right there, from a fucking executive. Because, quite simply, we can. Smaller publishers don't have alternative rev revenue sources. Prior to Google's anti-competitive conduct, the markets for ad exchanges and publishers' ad services were competitive. In, 20, in 2009, when Yahoo processed 9 billion daily ad impressions, Google Exchange was only transacting fewer, uh, transacted fewer than 200 million. Google monopolized the exchange and ad server markets by forcing publishers to license its ad server and trade in its exchange in order to receive bids from over a million advertisers. Google presentation in 2014. Ad Exchange is the only platform with direct access to the entirety of the AdWords demand. Google in a 2013 document. Google are artificially hand handicapping their buy side, their buy side, aka they're artificially handicapping Google ads to boost the attractiveness of their sell side ad exchange, specifically to limit Google ads to buying only on the ad exchange, an exclusivity that makes ad exchange more attractive to sellers. So they use their, the, the fact that they control both buying and selling to drive people to sell only to them. And then once everyone was selling only to them, they jacked up their prices. You see how this works? This is the same thing Amazon is doing, by the way, with regard to uh, uh, physical brick and mortar stores buying products. Same exact shit. Same exact shit. A bunch of unredacted material on Google's G Trade team relating to how it allegedly allegedly manipulates bids without disclosing. So here's the details for people who are really into this. You can go read what has now been unredacted about Google Trade. G Trade, Google Trade came up with the pro with Project Bernanke to use privileged access to detailed information regarding what advertisers historically bid to help advertisers using Google ads beat competitors. This is data harvesting. So basically, they gather an unfathomable amount of data using all of the data collection that they have on hand, and they predict exactly what you would want to pay, and then they, and then they use that information to lock out competitors who don't have access to that information because they don't control Google. This is what I was talking about. This is how they do. Remember when I was talking about how they get the shape of you? They don't actually care about any And these. And we're talking about ad people like these aren't even small fries like us. These are we're talking about ad people who are working in here and they just get the shape of the ad first. And they go, OK, people like you, uh, people like you would make a decision like this. People like you would pay a price like this and you don't have any other choice. So here you go. So they they get an idea of who the fuck they're of the, of the shape of the people, the behaviors of the people, and they predict and then they control. Very fucked. Very very fucked. Google's idea with Project Bernanke was to trade on inside information. 
This permitted Google to radically influence the amount of trading executed through Google ads. That's literally what I was just saying. That's what I was just saying. In 2015, Google signed agreement with WhatsApp to give users the option of backing up their messages. Users were led to believe that these were encrypted. They were not. Google knew, knew that users were misled. Holy shit. Do you know how huge of a privacy violation this is? So if you have ba if you backed up your messages on WhatsApp, they were unencrypted and Google could read every message that you ever sent. They have failed to elaborate that data shared from WhatsApp to third-party services does not get the same guarantee of encryption. This includes backups to Google Drive. Well, guess guess the people over at Google have probably been reading all your porn stories that you save on your Google Drive. What if those are lewds? They don't care. Do you think they've ever cared? It's important for users to know that when WhatsApp media files are shared with third parties such as Drive, the files are no longer encrypted. By June of 2016, about three, 434 million WhatsApp users backed up approximately 345 billion WhatsApp files on Google Drive, netting Google about a quarter of a billion new Google Drive customers. So you see what this does, right? So Google makes a deal with WhatsApp, WhatsApp, which is controlled by Facebook, okay? So WhatsApp makes a partnership with Google, and the deal is... WhatsApp users, you guys get to back up your files so that you don't lose your precious messages with your loved ones. Your your precious messages with the people that you love in your life that you would never want to lose. All you have to do is agree to, to use Google Drive. And conveniently, we won't tell you that they're not encrypted. So Google, so you agree to have your messages um, backed up. And then Google is able to read all of your messages, figure out all of the data they want about you. And they also get to mark down that uh, that uh, 345 billion new users came to Google Drive, which makes their stock value go up, 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 up. Ania from YouTube chat says, all my passwords, photos, and personal data I shared with my dad via WhatsApp, and my dad does backup messages. Yup, yup. You know that all the hackers in the world are looking at this and going, wow. How can we build an anonymous advertising profile based on you if your data is encrypted? Yeah, that's half the game. Exactly. Exactly. Wild. Isn't this market fixing too? Hmm. Sure sounds like it. New section. Google secretly met with competitors to discuss competition and forestall Consumer privacy efforts. In twenty in August 6th of 2019, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, and Google all discussed forestalling consumer privacy effort efforts. So listen to that. Forestalling consumer privacy effort efforts. That's what they that's how they talk about you. That's how they talk about you. Just so you know. They don't want you to be able to be private. They want to see your fucking data. They want to see your nudes. They want to know what brands of lube you use. They want to know what foods you eat. They want to know what your favorite type of, 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 of drug is. They want to know everything about you so that they can use it at their convenience for whatever the fuck they want. So that they can manufacture consent on a level you can't even imagine. What do you think about, uh, Pansexual Lizard says, what do you think about schools' dependency on Google products? Is there anything that can be done at schools to try and get it off Google products or at least move away from them? Uh, yeah. If you work at a school, encourage them to choose a different solution than, than, than Google. But good luck. This is the problem with monopolies. You don't end up with a choice. What won't you say when you know you're being watched? What becomes unrepresentable? Interesting. A very good question, Doe. What are the things that you can't or won't say when you know you're being watched? What are they making impossible to discuss? How strange. So the speaking into your speaker and suddenly Amazon knows what you want meme wasn't wrong, but instead of verbally speaking, it's just texting. No, wait, guys, guys. 
you do know that Facebook was literally found to have been listening onto your phone. They got in trouble with Apple years ago for literally listening in the background. When you installed Facebook on your phone and you logged in, the, your battery life would go down because Facebook was running in the background listening for keywords over your mic. That was not a meme. That was a real thing. There are open source computer companies that should be jumping on this news. Yeah, they'd be jumping on this news if they could get off the ground. The reality is this is why monopolies are done. It's a very tough problem. It's a society-wide problem. And it is interesting how the uh how how they shape the direction of everything going, don't they? Uh, Louis Baton says they listened to ambient conversation. One time a friend was talking about dodgeball. I had never even thought about dodgeball for years. Two weeks later, I got an ad for dodgeball on Facebook. I've had it happen super sooner than that. When I used to practice uh, S Spanish, I would end up getting Spanish ads all over every website that I used. It's just open spying. Yeah. But just remember, they are spying on you. But that doesn't mean they actually know anything. It doesn't actually mean they know how to do anything with it. Look at, think, I, I, just so that we don't doom out here, just so we don't doom out with everything that we're talking about, I want you to remember that the best thing that these idiots could think of doing is to win over a monopoly on an ad exchange. They have access to basically every, like, 343 million people's, or billion, million people, million accounts uh private information the best thing they could think of doing was oh yeah 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 we'll, we'll we'll make a monopoly on the ad exchanges so don't get too doomed just remember that just because they have all this data that data is expensive to maintain that data is expensive do you want to know do you want to know the wild shit that you can do did you know that there are ways to make it even more expensive you know unsustainable Got to grind, got to, got to slow down those gears every single way. Got to find all those ways to, to, to take up all their data, to fight them on every front because they can't keep doing this forever. It's not sustainable. Yeah, your data is getting sold right now. Literally right now. How do we make it more expensive so I can avoid doing so? Hmm. Hmm. Facebook had yet another massive leak a couple of weeks ago. Yes, it did. This is part of it. Yep, this is part of it. Hmm. Well, uh, honestly, there are a lot of ways that you can you, that we can do things like this. Uh, stuff like, um, well, see, you know, I don't want to give away all my secrets while streaming onto a Google platform. All I'm saying is there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of interesting ways that you can support people, uh, support people outside. Of, of the structures that you're told you have to use, you know? Or maybe they're predicting your future tastes, PD Pete. Maybe they're trying to guide you. Maybe they're, maybe they're giving you weird and off-base ads because they want you to like something new. They're trying to drive you into liking new things. Yeah, imagine using Google Chrome after all of this. Oh yeah, that was another thing. They were going to make, uh, they were going to push a, uh, uh, Google Pro, uh, Google Chrome usage by making lots of Google run websites incompatible with with uh, with other browsers. That was a, that was that was part of this. Look at this. Look at this right here. Google prep document says that the aim was to find areas of alignment and narrow gaps in our positions and priorities on child privacy and safety. Google ex expressed uh, particular concern that Microsoft was taking child privacy more seriously than Google and sought to rein in Microsoft. <laughs> Google was frustrated that Facebook was not aligned with it to reduce users' privacy, which is insane because it's Facebook. We have, we've had difficulty getting Facebook to align on our privacy goals and strategy as they have at times prioritized winning on reputation over its business interest in legislative debates. Google asks Microsoft to stop subtle privacy attacks, outlines ways we can work together. 
uh, AG. Google presents a public image of caring about privacy, but coordinates closely with big tech to lobby the government to delay or destroy measures that would actually protect users' privacy. Can we, can we, can we just stop? Like, do I even need to do this show anymore? Is Do I even need to do the show anymore with shit like this? Google presents a public image of caring about privacy, but coordinates closely with big tech to lobby the government to delay or destroy measures that would actually protect users' privacy. This is a corporation that can afford to do this, openly does it. Ending this for now, but other things to go to do. But alas, I'm at point 185, page 67 of 481 points and 142 pages. Sorry, I said thousands of pages before. Sorry, I meant to say hundreds of pages. If you're in this space, I'm happy to share my PDF with all unredactions highlighted. DM me. Now we know what Google has actually been doing to slow down internet privacy. The unredacted documents between Google and Facebook courtlistener.com oh yeah this is the one by the way if you want if you want the original document there you go boink there you go there you go if you want the original document bam yep but as i've said many times on this particular topic um the the uh the reality is this is a an almost it seems like an almost inescapable net for an individual and the truth is there really aren't a whole lot of individual solutions to this it is one person can't do anything if you step out you haven't cost them anything they don't care what we have to do is we have to recognize once again what sort of structure we've been put into um and we have to figure out how we can coordinate to make it to to undermine it and avoid it we used to have movies about this being fucked up back in the in the 2000s yeah but you know you know how shit goes you know how shit goes also probably worth mentioning that the companies benefiting from these borked ad markets and privacy violations are the same ones whose algorithms keep pointing kids to people like crowder or videos of spider-man cutting off elsa from Ho frozen's head that's true but remember do you remember what i said earlier you remember what I said earlier about twit about twit Twitter? That's true. Look at this. What did we what was the story we covered earlier? Twitter admits that they have a bias and algorithm for right wing politicians and news outlets in basically every English speaking country. UK, US, Canada, France, Germany, Spain, and Japan all have a, a acknowledged by Twitter bias. The government can the government do anything? Who who is running the government? Who has the lobbying money to affect legislation? Not you. You this is this is one of the problems we talk about with the issues with electoralism. You don't get to control what you get to vote on. They do. They get to go and give the legis Sometimes did you know that corporations one part of lobbying? Listen. One part of lobbying is that Corporations like Google will type, will have their lawyers type up the, the text of a law. They will deliver that law to the desk of, an, of, a, of a, a lawmaker and they will go, this is Google's recommended legislation. Here you go. Why don't you consider this? And then that text will be slightly modified. And then that person who is conveniently also getting lots and lots of contributions from Google will deliver that law that Google wrote to the Senate, to the House, which will inevitably end up on Joe Biden's desk and get signed into law. This is something that happens every day in America. This has been documented for the entirety of fucking corporate America's history. It is a tale as old as time. And this is the problem with hyperfixating on electoral go government solutions because you don't it, because the manufacturing of consent has gone so far. It's gone so far that you don't even know what options are being like, like how much say you have on the options that are given to you in the already limited form of governance that you get to participate in every four years. 
you get to go vote or every couple months depending on if you have a lot of local elections you get to go vote on a bunch of people that you don't actually get to choose that have more money than you that's why they can run for office and then you get to choose one of those people to make decisions for you and most of those people end up immediately getting lobbied by the exact same people that you were hoping to vote against we shouldn't forget about chrome yeah chrome sucks Chrome has long been a data harvesting operation. We all knew that. Fuck Chrome. If you're not doing anything wrong, you shouldn't be worried. Well, it turns out they have a lot of different, they have a very different understanding of what wrong is because in their minds, wrong is doing anything that's out of the interest of Google. A lot of browsers are, are Chromium based, so it's no surprise they have a monopoly on data. Of course, yep. There's all the Chromium, they've weaseled their way into everything. So we have to get, we have to get smarter than that. We have to get smart. Now, of course, moving off of Chrome is great. If you can stop using Facebook, that's fine. But we have to look on a bigger scale. We have to look at what we need to start moving towards, what we need to start building as communities. What are the things that we can start doing? Because in reality, until we find better alternatives, and I want you to ask yourself, hold on a second. This is a big, this is a big topic that we talk about pretty frequently. So I want you to ask yourself, do you really enjoy yourself as much as you feel you should on these social media sites do you really enjoy yourself as much as you think you do on 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 facebook or on twitter do you i don't i think they're mostly miserable it's just we don't have much other choice it's either that or we feel isolated so yeah half the people on twitter just complain about how they're bored all the day all the day yeah that's why i spend most of my time on discord because Discord, now Discord isn't perfect. Discord's got a lot of flaws, but Discord is uh, a little bit out of this circle. Like I feel like if we, like social media, I feel should be like the most exciting thing in the universe because it, it is literally connecting so many people um, all at the same time across con cultures, across countries. Uh, it's it's wild. It's absurd, and and yet we're all miserable miserable on here. These platforms suck. They're they're terrible. And, and we spend time on them only because we don't have any alternatives, do we? we what else are you going to do? You can't go out, right? There's a pandemic. And then even if you were going to go out, well, you got to spend money to go sit in a cafe. There's no parks anymore. There's no public concerts. There's no artistic spaces. There's no, you know, cool areas you can go to easily hang out that are maintained by communities. It's all been scooped up. So it's very interesting how we've been forced over time into participating because we have no other option, not because we're bad people or because we're bad consumers or anything like that, but because our options have been increasingly limited to living our entire social lives on social media. Yeah, parks are like fucking, do you, have, you, have you looked into the defunding of, of, uh, of parks? Have you looked into the privatization of parks? There are parks that bar you from entry now. I mean, of course, you don't have to listen to them, but they make it harder. It paradoxically creates profound loneliness, akin to feeling alone in a crowd, but the crowd is the entire world. Yes, that is true. We People say all the time, it's almost a true, it's like almost like a, was it truism? Is that the right word? It's like, a, it's like a saying that people say all the time. They're just like, in this age of online connection, we're less connected than ever before. How is that possible? How is it possible that we have been goaded into an era where we're always forced into these online spaces that make us miserable? I think we should think about that. And I think, I think we should spend a lot of time thinking about how we can inhabit, support, and create alternatives that do not create these sort of dynamics that that are uh, uh genuinely uh that are genuine spaces that encourage actual socialization that that uh that encourage uh bond making between the people that use them that that build new things because right now let's be real what twitter and facebook and and all these google platforms are is they're basically comment pits that are, are, or, or sorry, they're, they're, they're meat grinders that are disguised as commentary zones. You go in there to, uh, have, to have your conversations tampered with, to have your threads pushed around into weird places, to have ads stuffed all over everything you do. You know, I, I create a lot of art, you know, 
and I got ads all over all my stuff. You got no choice on it. You want to you want to even make a living at all? You got to have some ads. And we know we just talked about how little you actually get for it. Fucking two years of work with hundreds of 500,000 plus hours of viewing and you get what 14 cents uh, uh, 14 cents an hour is the payout for that. That's what you have to do in order to, you know, uh, to, to make, to get your art seen in a world where everything has to be littered with ads. Come on, this is bad. We can do better than this. We got to build better than this. We have to build a better world than this. We have to build a better internet than this. We have to.